Jason Singari here after the big main card event with the victorious winner, Frank Tate, and his son, Marcus Tate. How are you feeling tonight, Frank? Oh, I feel great. I feel great. Pretty much like I feel every day. You took this fight on three days' notice, or was it four? How do you do that? I don't know how many days it was notice, but it was it was a few days, um, a few days before I knew about I was going to fight him. You know, so much of the fight is mental. I know that you fought for you, you three two. I know so much of the fight is mental, and I know you were a big star mm -hmm. in Alabama playing with Marcel Stamps. But how do you deal? You know, you've you've had the experience with pressure being a football player, how do you deal mentally going into the fight on such short notice? Well, the pressure, the, you, you know, um, the pressure is from everyday life, yeah. dealing with everyday life. So so that's why I get the strength from to to, um, to overcome anything that I go through from everyday life's pressure. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you stuck to your game plan or did you even have one because it was just such short notice, sir? I didn't have a game plan. I, I don't normally have a game plan when I when I fight. I just fight, you know, um, and that's what I love to do. You know. I feel like Burns showed a lot of heart. What is your thoughts on that? But, um, Burns is a, is a is a guy that I love his spirit. You know, I mean, he, he's a stand-up guy. Anybody who steps in their cage is a stand-up guy to me because it takes some huge nuts. I mean, some huge ones. And um, I mean. Um, you just got to be a certain type of person to stand up in that ring. How would you break down the fight to viewers who have not had a chance to see it yet, sir? I, I, I hadn't really, um, really um, broke it down other than I got a um, few good punches, and that's all it really takes in this this um, this game right here. You, you get a few good punches with other heavyweights, and you're going down. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how strong you are. You're going down. It was interesting in one of the commentaries between Sean Wheelock after the fight, along with some of the other announcers, Dylan Klecker said, you better be scared of his right hand. Hey, Dil <laughs> Dylan, huh? Dylan, <laughs> oh, I love Dylan. I love Dylan. I want to fight him again, though. You know, um, I think I got a bad call on that one, but, you know, it's a win is still a win. But I, I, I want to fight him again. How have you changed as a fighter since we first have seen you in Bare Knuckle FC? I, I hadn't really changed the, the, the stuff. The stuff is already in me. You know, it takes um, some of the fighters like um, my, my good brother, Leonard Brown, to bring it up out of me. You know, he's been fighting with me for years and he, know, he knows me. And, you know, a lot of times you don't know yourself and it takes other people to help bring the stuff that you already have out of you, out of you. And my brother, Leonard Brown, he, 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 he did that. Who do you have on your radar next? Um, I, I, who, whoever, whoever wants to fight me. You know, I, I don't care who I fight. I just love to fight. You know, it's a stress relief for me. So, um. In the interviews, they put up some stats, and you had such amazing precision. Did you feel like that when you were out there, when you were hitting him, that you were really connecting tonight? Um. You know, I, 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 when, I, when I hit him the first time, I saw it, you know, and he kind of buckled and his leg like shook. And, um, but but my, 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 like I said, my brother, Leonard Brown, he, 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 he gave me the mental speech and he kicked my butt all through training. Yeah, he kicked my butt all through training and, you know, because it's in me, yeah. you know, but like I said, he kicked my butt all through, all through training. All right, the question of the night. I hear you want to be a fighter. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Are you going to play for Alabama, too? No, ma'am, I'm not. I really don't want to go to college. Okay. So what advice would you give to your son, who's very proud of you standing right here next to me, mm -hmm. about getting into the world of boxing then, Frank? All right. I, th I think, um, you know, um, it's more so... Um, Defending itself in in case any situation should break off, I, I I just hope he make the right choice himself. You know I can't do nothing but coach him on on the stuff that I know and the stuff that's going on in today's world and hope he make a good choice. You know, um, but they kids they're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna do things that you don't like and they're gonna do do, do things you love. So I'm hoping and I believe he he got it in him to make the best choices for himself. 
Does he have the same kind of right hand as you do, uh, Frank? He, he have a, a <laughs> nice right hand. I mean, a nice right hand. A, a long right hand. Mm -hmm. Stick your right hand out. Stick, stick that right all the way out there. He's, <laughs> and it's strong. <laughs> All right, for the back. All right, Mr. Tate, Mr. T Mr. Younger Junior Tate, and Mr. Frank Tate, thank you so much for taking the time to interview with me. All right, Bare Knuckle News fans, we are here always behind the scenes bringing you all the exclusive fighter interviews, both before and after the fight. I'm Susan Singari, and remember, no one beats us to the punch. <laughs>